from the Steven Seagal Broadway revival of The Sound of Music, this is Kurt Berglund with Pine Tar, Negro Leagues, Great Teams, Tournament Action. We are in round one, game two of the series between the 1942 Monarchs, Kansas City Monarchs, and the 1910 Chicago Lelands. They are divided by 32 years of Negro Leagues history, but they are both excellent teams. Game one went to the Monarchs 3-1 to one behind the pitching of Satchel Page. So in this best of three game series, that means the Lelands must win or go home. Frank Wickwear, the ace for the Lelands, is unavailable because he went a complete game in game one. And so Leland's manager, Rube Foster, must decide who will pitch game two, and he has called his own number. Rube Foster, one of the greats uh, in Negro League's history as a player, as a manager, as an owner, and as a league or organizer, is um, one of the pivotal figures in Negro League's history. He is on the mound for the 1910 Leland's today. The Leland's, of course are fundamentally sound and so they will not beat themselves you're gonna have to do that and it's gonna be tough to do even for a great team like the kansas city monarchs on the mound for them today is jack batchett the number two starter of this team he had all the pitches he was not overpowering but he was very effective for a number of monarchs uh, world series teams in the 1940s and late 30s so we should have a good one here today. The 42 Crawfords, uh, the 42 Monarchs at the 1910 Lelands. Let's go to the starting lineups. All right, so in this must-win game for the Lelands, we start with the visiting Monarchs lineup. Leading off in left field, it's Willie Sims. Betting second at second base, Bonnie Sorrell. Betting third in right field, Ted Strong. Batting fourth in center field, Willard Brown. Batting fifth and doing the catching, Joe Green. Batting sixth at first base, Buck O'Neill. Batting seventh at, se at third base, Newt Allen. And batting eighth at shortstop, it's Jesse Williams. Batting ninth and on the mound is Jack Matchett, who bats right and, I'm sorry, throws right and bats left. That's what his card looks like. He is an A-plus pitcher on the road. But drops to a C the third time through the order, and you can see that he has some control issues potentially as well. All right, for the homestanding 1910 Chicago Lelands, leading off in left field is Frank Duncan. Betting second in center field, Pete Hill. Betting third at shortstop, Pop Lloyd. Betting fourth at second base, Grant Johnson. Batting fifth in right field, it's Andrew Payne. Batting sixth and at first base, Pete Booker. Batting seventh, the third baseman, Wesley Pryor. And batting eighth, catcher Bruce Petway. Batting ninth and on the mound, it's Rube Foster, who, as you can see, is an A-plus A pitcher at home. No modifiers, and he can give you eight innings if he pitches well. So we're ready to go. A three to one win for the Monarchs in game one. This is game two of a best of three. Here we go. And the first pitch of the game is grounded to Pop Lloyd at short. And he's going to throw to Booker, at Pete Booker at first. And there's one man out. We're underway in the first inning. Bonnie Sorrell comes up. He was a 360 hitter on the 42 season. And we're going to have our first modifier of the game. This is a strikeout that stays a strikeout. Foster off to a good start. And now it's Ted Strong, 364 on the 42 season for the Monarchs. Two outs, nobody on. The pitch to him is also going to get modified. That is a single, but it's going to change to a strikeout. And that's the second for Rube Foster in the first inning. Leland's off to a good start. It's no score after one half inning. And here comes Frank Duncan to face Jack Matchett. 
Duncan 307 for the Lelands. And that's grounded to first. Grabbed by Buck O'Neill. He's going to take it himself. And there's one man out in the Lelands first inning. Now it's Pete Hill, Hall of Fame center fielder. And that's a line drive base hit center field for Pete Hill. He is aboard and he can run. Uh, let's check throwing arms. Joe Green is a minus 12, had quite a gun behind that plate. Hill is a 69, so knocks him down to a 57. We'll see if they put a play on. Pop Lloyd at the plate, 371. For Pop, an all-time great Hall of Famer as well. And this is a blooper, center field. Here comes Willard Brown, he can't get there. Drops for a base hit. Hill will stop at second, and the Lelands have two on with one out in the bottom of the first inning. It's Grant Johnson coming to the plate. Home run, Johnson. Hit 326 in 1910. Match its pitch. Is grounded to third. That's Newt Allen. Newt fumbles it. His only play is going to be to first base. He throws to O'Neill in time to get him, and the runners advance. Hill to third, Lloyd to second, and with two outs now, it's up to Andrew Payne to drive in a go-ahead run. 243 average for the right fielder. Match it in a first inning jam, the pitch to Payne. He lost him, then takes it outside, ball four, and the bases are now dripping with Leland's. Two outs though for Pete Booker. 302 for the first baseman for the 1910 club. The pitch from Matchett. Ground ball third. That's taken by Allen. He's going to take it himself to the third base bag, and the Monarchs get out of first inning trouble. We've played one complete in Chicago at Comiskey Park, and it is one. It is, there's no score in game two of this series. Willard Brown, Joe Green, and Buck O'Neill for the Monarchs in the second inning. 338 for the, probably the MVP of the Monarchs. Maybe it was Ted Strong. Uh, and this is lifted to left field, and that's going to be Frank Duncan, who is going to take it for out number one. Four in a row for Rube Foster, all-time great pitcher and a Hall of Famer. Joe Green stands in, 226 for the catcher. And Foster, he struck him out. Third strikeout for the all-time great Rube Foster. And with two outs and nobody on, it's Buck O'Neill in the top of the second inning. 280 for O'Neill. Sawed him off, left field, Lloyd retreating, can't get there. It falls for a base hit for the first baseman for the Monarchs. And with two outs and a man on first, it's Newt Allen. 304 for the former second baseman. All-time great, should be in the Hall of Fame, isn't. Line drive, base hit, right field. He goes the other way. Look at Buck O'Neill around second. He's going to take third. And there's Monarchs at the corners with two outs in the top of the second. Jesse Williams stands in, 232. And Jack Match is on deck. Foster to the belt, checks the runners. The pitch home to Williams. Hey, he struck him out. Strike out number four to get out of a second inning jam. And we are scoreless through one and a half in Chicago. Coming up for the Lelands against Jack Matchett, it's Wesley Pryor, Bruce Petway, and then Rube Foster, the pitcher. Matchett's pitch to Pryor. He lost him, ball four. Ball four. Let's 
see what they want to do here with Petway. Petway 267 on the season. Foster, Rube Foster, the pitcher, is on deck. See what they might want to put on here. Foster, not much at the bat at 1910. Match it to the belt. Checks prior at first. The pitch to Petway. Petway squares to Bunt. And gets it down. This is gloved by O'Neill, who's going to flip to the second baseman, Sorrell, and that will advance the runner to second base for Rube Foster. who comes up for his first plate appearance. And here's Rube's card. Man on second, one out. Frank Duncan on deck. Match it to the belt in another jam. The pitch to Foster. Hey, struck him out. That's match. It's first and a good time for it. Two gone in the second inning, and now it's Duncan. 307, he's 0 for 1 today. The pitch from match it. Ground ball second. That's Bonnie Sorrell. He's going to throw to Buck O'Neill, and that will retire the side in the second inning. We're scoreless through two. Figured to be a tight one. Most of these first-round games have been just that. In the third inning for the Monarchs, it'll be Matchett leading off. And then the top of the order, Sims and Sorrell. Foster doing okay so far. This is a ground ball, second base. That's Grant Johnson. He's going to throw to Booker, and that will retire the Monarchs pitcher for the first out. Now it's Willie Sims. Pitch to him. Hit to right. Not deep. Andrew Payne is under it, and he makes the catch for the second out. And now Bonnie Sorrell. Bonnie's 0 for 1. He struck out in the first inning. The pitch. Hit to right. Again, not deep. Payne is under it, and he will retire the side for Rube Foster's second 1-2-3 inning of this game. We go to the bottom of the third, and we're scoreless. It's the lumber in the Leland's order. Pete Hill, Pop Lloyd, and Grant home run Johnson coming up in the bottom of the third. We're scoreless. Pitch to Hill. Lifted to center field. This is Willard Brown, and he puts it away for out number one. Team's playing a little bit tight here in game two. Pop Lloyd singled back in the first. Ground ball, Sorrell. He's going to throw to O'Neill for the second out, and that's four men in a row, five men in a row, retired by Jack Matchett. Grant Johnson's 0 for 1. And this one is a line drive, base hit to left field, gets just past the outstretched glove of Williams, and he's aboard with a single. So Johnson can run. He's a 74. Are they going to send him? Um, Joe Green is a minus 12, knocks him down to a 62. Payne is up. He walked in the first. Match it to the belt. Johnson takes his lead. The pitch. Payne takes. There goes Johnson. The throw down is not in time. And Johnson steals second base and is in scoring position now. Payne behind in the count. 0-1. Chance to drive in the first run of the game, though. For Andrew, for the right fielder of the Lelands. Match it to the belt. Checks Johnson at second now. Pitch home to Andrew. Hit to center. And Willard Brown is going to make the catch for out number three. We're a third of the way through this one. And we are scoreless. Rube Foster back on the hill. 
The big right-hander will face the meat of the Monarchs order, strong, brown, and green, in the top of the fourth. And Strong takes inside, and that's ball four. He jogs down to first base. And now it's Brown, who's definitely got some pop in that bat. The cleanup hitter is 0 for 1 today. Foster to the belt, the pitch to Willard Brown. Hit to center, that's Pete Hill coming in a few steps. And will make the catch. That's one gone. And now Joe Green... Foster's pitch. And Green laces it inside the left field line, just past the outstretched glove of Pryor. And Strong will go to third. Now, are they going to wave him? When there's one out, they're going to wave him around. Let's see what we get here. Left field. That's Duncan. Excellent arm. They're going to wave strong anyway. Duncan hits Lloyd with the relay. Lloyd turns and throws. In time, the tag gets him at the plate. It's 7 6 2 if you're scoring at home. And if you are, may God help your soul. Buck O'Neill comes to the plate. Monarch's first good chance to score. Shot down on a relay from Duncan to Lloyd to Petway, who applied the tag. Shooting down Ted Strong at the plate. So with two outs and Green on second, it's Buck O'Neill with a chance to drive in the winning or the lead run. Here in the top of the fourth, the pitch from Foster. Base hit O'Neill. Here comes Green. They're going to put the brakes on him, and it'll be Monarchs at the corners with two outs for Newt Allen. Foster still on the ropes. Newt Allen singled back in the second inning. The pitch to him. Taking ball two. Pitch to Allen. Hit to right. This is Payne coming in, coming in, coming in. He's got it. And that retires the Monarchs in the fourth. Aggressive base running gets shot down. We go to the bottom of the fourth. We're still scoreless in Chicago. Must win for the Lelands. It'll be Booker, Pryor, and Petway for Chicago in the bottom of the fourth. And if anybody gets on, Rube Foster against Jack Matchett. Pitch to Pete Booker is hit to right field. That's Ted Strong in his tracks and makes the catch for first out of the fourth inning. Now it's Wesley Pryor who walked back in the second, hit 238, 1910. Pitch to him. Got our first air check. He hits it hard. Let's see where it goes. Hit to third, gloved by Allen. He's throwing to Buck O'Neill, and they get him at first base. That's two down, and now Bruce Petway with Rube Foster on deck. Bruce Petway, 267, successfully sacrificed in the second inning. The pitch, hit to right field. Ted Strong, third out of the inning. For Jack Matchett, who has retired four in a row now. We go to the fifth. And it's Williams, Matchett, and then the top with Sims coming up for the 42 Monarchs. We are scoreless in Chicago. Williams 0 for 1 with a strikeout back in the second inning. Monarch shortstop stands in there. The pitch. Another error check. Hits it hard. Where does it go? Left field. That's Duncan. 
And Frank's going to make the catch for out number one. Now it's match it. Oh for one for Jack. Pitch from Foster. Line shot caught by Lloyd. That's two down and three in a row for Foster, who has pitched into and out of some trouble in the early going. Sims with two outs and nobody on. Willie's 0 for 2 in the game so far. The leadoff man for the Monarchs. Hit to right. That's Payne toward the line and gets there. We're halfway through this one, and we have no score in Chicago. It'll be Foster to lead off. It'll be Foster to lead off. And then Duncan, and he'll be followed by Hill in the Chicago 5th. Foster's 0 for 1 with a strikeout on the day so far. Something's got to break here. This is a ground ball to Williams at short. He's going to throw to O'Neill, and there's one gone. In the Chicago fifth, Frank Duncan stands in at 3.07 on the season for Chicago. Ground ball second, that's Sorrell. He throws to Buck O'Neill, and that's two gone. Six in a row now for Matchett, who has tired a little bit, and he has dropped to a C grade on his card. Pete Hill, one for two. And Pete hits it hard. It's in the air. Making an error check. Right field, Ted Strong makes, no, he does not make the catch. He drops the ball. He drops the ball. It's a one base error for Strong and Hill is aboard with two outs and now Grant, uh, Pop Lloyd with Grant Johnson on deck. Lloyd one for two, match it. Betrayed by his defense, the pitch. Ground ball, Sorrell. He's going to go the short way to Williams covering second, and that will retire the Lelands in the fifth. We go to the sixth. We have no score in this one. The winner of this game, by the way, goes on to face the 1925 Hilldale Daisies based out of Philadelphia. And that will be a very difficult a second round matchup for either one of these ball clubs. The Daisies were the real deal in 1925 and are loaded. They got a first round bye. All right, Sorrell up there, the number two hitter for the Monarchs. Hits it to center. Pete Hill ranging towards right center and makes the catch for the first out. One gone in the sixth. Now it's strong, 0 for 1, walking a whiff, and got shot down at the plate on our closest chance to score in this game so far. And we got a range check. Get to the kitchen. It's a range check. Center field. That's Pete Hill. On the run, on the run, on the run. He does not get there. It drops for a base hit. Ted Strong is aboard with another, with another. He's on board for the second time. And now it'll be Willard Brown to face Foster. Every pitch, every batter means something to these Chicago Lelands. They've got to win this game. 0 for 2 for Brown. The pitch to Willard. Hit to left. That's Duncan, who's under it. And we'll make the catch for out number two. And it'll be all up to Joe Green, who is one for two. He doubled and almost played it strong back in the fourth inning. Strong at first base now. There's two men out. The pitch to Green is drilled to right center and deep. This one going to get over Pete Hill's head. 
Green around first. He's around second. Hill having trouble. He throws it back into Grant Johnson, who whirls and throws home to Petway. Strong is safe this time on a triple by Joe Green. It's one nothing Monarchs. Ted Strong used his wheels to score all the way from first base on the triple, and it's one nothing Monarchs. Rube Foster, a little bit miffed at on the mound right now. Buck O'Neill at the plate. He's two for two. They'd love to get some insurance. By scoring Joe Green from third base, but there are two men out. The pitch from Foster. Ground ball. Johnson, who's going to throw to Booker, and that will retire the Monarchs in the sixth, but the Monarchs break out on top with a solo run, and we've learned in this tournament, solo runs can be awfully, awfully big. one nothing Monarchs after five and a half. It'll be Johnson, Payne, and Booker for the 1910 Lelands in the bottom of the sixth against Matchett. The pitch hit to left. This is Sims on the run. He gets there for the first out of the sixth inning. Now it's Andrew Payne, who's 0 for 1 with a walk on the day. Matchett pitching well, doing what he needs to do. Pitch to Payne. Hit hard, hit up in the air. The wind's got it. We are in Chicago. And it's off Sims' glove for a one base error. Sims drops the ball. The Monarchs with their second error of the game. And Payne is on first base, ready to make trouble. Pete Booker stands in, 302 for him. On the season, but he's 0 for 2 in this game. Let's see if the Monarchs are going to get something going in the bullpen to help match it out a little bit. Uh, they are. It's going to be Jim Lamarck and Connie Johnson. Double barreled action for the. Monarchs going in the bullpen. Booker stands in. Match it to the belt. Checks Payne at first. The pitch home to Booker. Hit to center. This is Willard Brown. Into right center a little bit, but he's got it. And that'll re make Payne retreat back to first base. And now it's up to Wesley Pryor with two outs. Wesley's 0 for 1 with a walk on the day. Payne still at first. And match it. Almost out of this. The pitch... That's a ground ball toward Buck O'Neill, who gloves it and flips to match it covering, and that will retire the Lelands in the sixth. So they get a runner, but can't score him. And we go to the bottom, top of the seventh, sorry, top of the seventh, Foster back out. It's the bottom third of the order for the Monarchs, Newt Allen. And then Jesse Williams and then Jack Matchett, although I suppose they could hit for him. We'll see how that goes. New Allen stands in against Foster. Line shot, diving play by Pete Booker, one gone. Nice play by Pete. Jesse Williams stands in. Jesse grounds this one to Pop Lloyd. He throws to Booker. There's two gone. And now with two outs and nobody on, they're going to let Match at bat. We can handle the bat a little bit. 0 for 2 in this game, however. Foster pitching every batter with intensity. The pitch to right. Payne coming in. Coming in. Makes the catch. And we've played six and a half. In Chicago, it's time to see if the Lelands can do something here. 
match that has not allowed a hit since the third inning. We are now in the bottom of the seventh. It's Petway, Foster, and Duncan coming up. Foster is in the on-deck circle. 14-man roster for the Lelands. But they've got a couple of guys on the bench that have some pops. So we'll see what they decide to do. Petway at the plate. The pitch from Matchett. Hit to center. Willard Brown is there. And there's one gone. Foster is due. They're going to let him bat. Rube is going to call his own number on this one and facing match it, the pitch. Hits it up in the air. Got to do an error check. This is Jesse Williams. Jesse Williams. Jesse Williams makes the play. There's two down. And now Frank Duncan with nobody aboard in the seventh. Getting late for those Lelands in a game they got to win. The pitch. To right. Strong. Towards right center. We'll get there. And that retires the side in the seventh. We go to the eighth. It's 1-0. 42 Monarchs over the 1910 Chicago Lelands. Foster. Got to get through six more outs, and they got to figure out a way to score a run or two. Sims, Sorrell, and Strong, it's the top of the 42 Monarchs order in the top of the eighth. They have a one nothing lead and would love some insurance. The pitch to Sims. Line drive, left field, goes the other way. Base hit, it drops in, and Sims can run. So let's see if the Monarchs decide to Try and create some trouble here. Petway, great arm, maybe the best in Negro League's history. Knocks Willie down to a 58, so they could put the bunt on for Sorrell with strong on deck. Number of options they could use here. Foster facing Sorrell. Sorrell's 0 for 3. Foster the belt, pitch to Sorrell. He squares to bunt. He gets it down, but whoa, it's grabbed by Booker, who goes to Lloyd for the force out, and they force Sims at second. So it's a fielder's choice, and Sorrell is aboard with one out now for Strong. They, the sacrifice attempt fails. Good fundamental execution by the Lelands. What they're known for. Foster... Facing strong, the pitch. Line drive, right field. He goes the other way. Base hit. Falls in front of Payne. Sorrell is going to go to third. And there are Crawfords at the corners for the cleanup hitter, Willard Brown. Not what the Lelands had in mind. They're going to have to bring the infield in. They're going to bring the infield in at this point. All right, one out. Brown at the plate. He is not a bunter. He is up there to mash. Foster to the belt. The pitch home. Left field. Base hit. It falls in over Lloyd's glove. That's going to score Sorrell from third. That's going to send Strong to third, and it's a RBI single for Willard Brown, first and third again for the Monarchs. It's 2-0 in the top of the eighth. Joe Green at the plate, infield still in. Foster in a jam, Strong at third, Brown at first, the pitch home. Grounded to short. 
contact play on. Lloyd to Petway. The tag on Strong. They got him. Fielder's choice. Green reaches. Brown advances to second. And Strong is out for the second time in the game at the plate. Six to two. So there's runners at first and second now with two outs for Buck O'Neill. And Rube Foster still on the ropes. Infield moves to normal, normal depth. O'Neill is two for three in this game. Buck hits it to left. That's Frank Duncan's land, and he will make the catch for out number three. We have... Played seven and a half, and it's two nothing. Forty two monarchs. They are six outs from a second round date with the twenty five Hilldale Daisies. Lamarck and Johnson are throwing in the Kansas City bullpen. Hill is at the plate, two one for three. Then Lloyd, then Johnson. Pitch to Pete. Driven to right and deep. This is going to send Strong to the wall. It's gone. Pete Hill has left the building. So has Elvis. And it's two to one. The Leland's fighting back. So that's going to do it for Jack Matchett, who pitched seven plus innings. Yeah, yeah, that's going to do it for Matchett. Seven plus innings. He allowed only three hits. He walked, no, I'm sorry, he allowed four hits. He walked two. He struck out one, but leaves in line for the victory if the Monarchs can hold him right there. Pop Lloyd coming to the plate. It's going to be Jim Lamarck, a hard thrower, coming in out of the bullpen. He is a lefty, and he will bat ninth. There's nobody out in the bottom of the eighth, and it's two to one Monarchs. And the Lelands are looking for more. Pop Lloyd is one for three in this game. Pitch from Lamarck. And he lost him. Ball four. Close call. Lloyd goes down to first base, and now it's Grant Johnson. Grant is one for three. He stole a base in the game. Lloyd is the tying run. He's at first base. Lamarck to the belt. The pitch. A struck him out, and Lamarck throws some gas right by home run Johnson. Now it's Payne. Lloyd still at first, 0 for 2 for Payne. He's also walked today. The pitch. Hey, struck him out. More gas from Jim Lamarck. Two gone in the bottom of the eighth, and now it's Pete Booker. 0 for 3 for Pete. Lamarck, the pitch. Hey, he struck him out. So Lamarck comes in, walks Lloyd, and then blows away the competition with a striking out the side. So after eight complete, it is 2-1 Monarchs. Coming down to last call here. Rube Foster still on. He will face the bottom third of the order for Mon the Monarchs. It's Allen, Williams, and Lamarck if he bats. Or they could go to Connie Johnson to close it out. Allen is one for three. The pitch from Foster. 
Looper, left field, here comes Frank Duncan. He's got it. There's one gone in the ninth. Jesse Williams comes up. Jesse's 0 for 3. Pitch from Foster. Ground ball. Gloved by Johnson. He's in the hole. He throws to Booker, and there's two gone. And now, see what they do. They're going to hit for Lamarck. No, they're not going to hit for Lamarck. They're going to use him. Lamarck's going to bat. He's, he can hit okay. He's just a wild man out there with that arm. Pitch to Jim. Ground ball Lloyd. He gloves it, throws to Booker, and that retires the Monarchs in the ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth. This is it for the Lelands in this tournament if they cannot score a run. If they score two, we're going back to Kansas City for game three. Bottom third of the order, it's Pryor, Petway, and Foster, who likely will not bat. Pryor stands in at 0 for 2 with a walk. Lamarck throwing heat. Johnson still loose in that pen. The pitch. Ground ball, Jesse Williams. He's going to throw to Buck O'Neill for the first out of the ninth inning. That's trouble. Bruce Petway against Lamarck. 0 for 2 for Petway with a bunt. The pitch. Ground ball, Sorrell. He throws to O'Neill, two down, and last chance saloon for the Lelands. They're going to bat for Rube Foster with Fred Hutchinson. Little used backup, but he's the best they got. <coughs> Excuse me. Two outs, the ninth inning. Here comes Hutch. Lamarck. Looking to close this thing out and earn the save. The pitch. <coughs> Hit to left and deep. Center field. Brown to the wall. It's gone. Fred Hutchinson with a game-tying home run. Bottom of the ninth inning. Lightning strikes for the 1910 Lelands. They are up off the mat. Yikes. Two outs. Bottom of the ninth. One of their spare parts comes up. Pinch hits for the pitcher and jacks it out of here. It's a dong for Hutchinson, and we're tied at two. Duncan comes to the plate. Frank is 0-4-4 in this one. Lamarck shaken. The pitch... To left field, Sims on the run. He will make the catch near the line, but the Lelands take us two extra innings. It's 2-2 two -two as we go to the 10th. We need a new pitcher for those Lelands. Hutchinson, still smiling in the dugout. Here comes Bill Lindsay for the Lelands. In relief of Foster. He will bat ninth. And take over as the pitcher here in the 10th. Top of the order for the Monarchs. Can they get up off the deck and do what needs to be done? Fred Hutchinson, the hero so far for the Lelands. We're tied at two. It's the top of the tenth. One for four for Sims. The pitch from Lindsay. Pulled a right, and it's a base hit for Sims. First hit of the second hit of the game for Sims. And he can run. Sorrell at the plate. Sorrell hitting to a fielder's choice last time up. Do they bunt? That's a good question. Lindsay to the belt. Checks Sims at first. Pitch home to Sorrell. He squares to bunt. He gets it. Down. Uh... 
Uh, let's see what happens. We got doubles. Fumbled by Lindsay. Sorrell legs it out. Everybody's going to be safe. It's first and second. So that's what the Monarchs needed. They got Sims at second, Sorrell at first, and there's nobody out in the top of the 10th. Lindsay in a huge jam. The pitch to Ted Strong, who is two for three, but has been shot down at the plate twice in this game. The pitch from Lindsay. Hey, struck him out just when he needed to. First strikeout for Lindsay. One out in the 10th. Willard Brown, the hero of the eighth inning when he brought home Sorrell with a single. Willard is one for four in the game. The pitch from Lindsay. He lost him. That's ball four, and the bases are dripping with Monarchs. They are loaded, and the Lelands are going to play in one more time. Green at the plate. Not an accomplished bunter, but he is two for four in the game. He does have a ribby. He has a double. He has a triple. Infield in. Lindsay, the belt, the pitch home. We got a rare play. Now what? 91 on the rear play. Chopper down third base. Sims hit by the ball. Sims is out. Sims is out and the runners have to hold. The bases are loaded still now with two outs because Sims, for whatever reason, was ruled to be in fair territory. So he is out. And O'Neill comes to the plate. Two for four for Buck. Chance to take the lead, but he's got to come through. Lindsay to the belt. The pitch home to Buck. Center field and deep and over Pete Hill's head. This is going to bounce off the wall. It'll score Sorrell from third. It'll score S Brown from second. Green will stop at third. It's 4-2 Monarchs as they come back and retake the lead. Newt Allen comes to the plate. Second, third, two outs, and Williams is on deck. They would walk Allen, but Lindsay's control is horrible, and they don't want to walk in a run. The pitch. Hey, struck him out, and that gets the Leland's out of an awful 10th inning. For the Monarchs, it's two runs on three hits, and they leave two. We're now in the bottom of the 10th, and they need more lightning. The new pitcher is going to be Connie Johnson for the Monarchs. He will bat in the ninth spot. And you can see Connie's problem is right there in the modifier. He has walks 55 to 60 and 77, so a little bit wild for Connie. And he will face Hill, Lloyd, and Johnson, the most capable offensive weapons the Lelands had in 1910. It is 4-2 Monarchs. The Lelands are up in the bottom of the 10th. If the Lelands lose, they are done in the tournament. If the Monarchs win, they go on to face the 1925 Hilldale Daisies in round two. Pete Hill leads off. He is two for four with a solo homer. The pitch from Connie Johnson is trouble. Center field. That's going to get over Willard Brown's head, and Pete Hill gets to run. He's going to get to second. He rounds second hard. He will put on the brakes. And that... Yep, he's going to stop at second. His run doesn't mean as much as Pop Lloyd's does. Pop Lloyd is the tying run. There's nobody out in the 10th. Pop Lloyd is one for three with a walk. Hill is on second with a leadoff double. The pitch from Johnson to Lloyd. He struck him out. That's the first 
for Johnson, and there's one out now. Grant home run Johnson. Would love to do just that. Johnson to the belt. Pitches to Johnson. Hit to left. Sims coming in. Will get there and make the catch. Two outs now for Payne. Last chance saloon for the Lelands, but we said that before. Pete Hill still at second base. Payne is the tying run. The pitch. Hit to left. Sims toward left center. Plenty of time, plenty of room, and he gets there. He makes the catch, and the Monarchs win 4-2 to advance to the second round. Let's give you the totals. For the victorious visiting 1942 Kansas City Monarchs, four runs. On 11 hits, and they committed two, yes, two errors for the vanquished 1910, but very game, Chicago Leland's two runs on six hits, and they committed no errors. Winning pitcher is Lamarck. He is 1 0 in the tournament. The losing pitcher is Foster. He ends the tournament 0 1. The save goes to Connie Johnson, his first of the tournament. So The 1910 Lelands are eliminated, and we'll give you a look at the bracket before we depart here today. We're on the right side of the bracket, and up at the top, the St. Louis Stars have eliminated the 1924 Monarchs. 1928 Stars swept him two games to nothing and advanced to face the 35 Crawfords. The 42 Monarchs sweep the 1910 Lelands and move on to face the 1925 Hilldale Daisies. On the other side of the bracket, we are not done. We go to game three between the 1917 Chicago American Giants and the 1933 Chicago American Giants. The winner of that game, which will be next on this channel in this tournament will go on to face the 31 Homestead Grays, seated number one in the tournament. And on the bottom half of the left side of the bracket, it's the 46 Newark Eagles who swept the 47 uh, New York Cubans two games to nothing. And they will face, the 46 Newark Eagles will face the 29 Baltimore Black Sox who swept the Philadelphia Stars two games to nothing as well so the tournament is rounding into shape we have one more first round game to take care of which we will do uh, in the next day or two and get that on the channel thank you so much for your interest in pine tar baseball and the negro leagues hope you enjoyed this hope you subscribe to my channel for more pine tar baseball negro leagues great teams tournament action my name is kurt berg and we got to stick together everybody Hope you have a good evening. So long, everybody.